Hi, my name is Felice, and in 2015, I had a near-death experience, and I think it's important to share a little bit about what uh, had led up to that point. I went through a period in my life that I refer to as resiliency boot camp. I became an empty nester. I was a single mom, became an empty nester. Partner had an affair, so there was infidelity. House had a fire. Before the house had a fire, there was a theft of in my house of all my jewelry. I had surgery because I had a skiing accident. Then there was a flood in the bottom portion of the house after the top had to be gutted. And I took a leave of absence from work. So all of that happened in about 15 to 18 months. And just as I got on my feet again is when this major shift in my life occurred. You know, up until that point, I knew that if those experiences could help another, that that made it worth it, right? Like that kind of minimized all the trauma that was experienced during that time. And I had been teaching at a Montessori school and consulting for other schools and and Montessori training centers. And there was this pull to really use my experiences, again, what was garnered and what was learned through coming out of the other side of that period. I knew that that was calling me and I didn't heed that voice. I kind of went about my daily life as I kind of refound myself after all of that stuff had gone on. And on December 2nd, 2015, I was leaving work and I walked to the corner. My car was parked it a lot off the school grounds in a lot that the school rented. I walked to the corner and the light turned red there was a there was a big four-way intersection and my car was kind of catty corner across the intersection and i looked both ways and the cars had stopped and i proceeded to cross the street and about three quarters of the way across i'll say it it was a little you know it's december 2nd in the northeast so it it gets darker earlier so it was dusk it was about 4 30 and it was kind of misty and rainy out and unusually warm for that that time of year. And when I had the right of way, a big truck who was going straight came up from behind me and apparently there was an oncoming car and she was trying to make the left before the oncoming car came. And she hit me in the crosswalk going about 30 miles an hour. And what happened was as soon as I felt a thump against the right side of my body it was like time slowed down and at the same time i whipped my head around in the direction that the truck came it was like frames of a movie reel even though it happened really fast it was very slow motion almost and the next thing i knew i was above my body looking down at the scene with a bird's eye view and my body was laying it looked like a chalk drawing and I heard the girl who hit me say that she had hit me and that she had called 911 and there were two other people there there was a man and another woman and I could see it was like there was this expansive vision yet as if a spotlight was focused on what was going on below even though there was this sense of broadness and I could see the man direct one of the women not the woman who said she had hit me uh, directed that woman to go over to the cross street one of the cross streets to stop the traffic to direct the traffic and meanwhile I was above my body looking at the scene and at first there was a sense of disorientation And then there was, it was like um, an assessing of sorts to determine or to see or to understand if I was gonna be able to go back into the physical form that was identified as me. And at some point I realized that I was existing as the body 
that was lying on the ground and also in this state of awareness that I was above my body as well. So I was existing in both of these places and as I understood that I could go back, there was an instant knowing that I could go back. My body looked intact. I didn't know in that state of there were multiple fractures and internal swelling and I was bleeding out of my pelvis. And I didn't know that and I didn't know that my head was was bleeding, but I wasn't able to see that. It was a very calm kind of knowing. And once I heard that or knew that, this scene below me started to fade and the scene and the consciousness that I was in started to get more potent. And it's like I became more of that place of existence. And the next thing I knew, and I don't know whether I traveled there or whether it emerged, I was in complete and total blackness. And it wasn't a scary blackness. It was a spacious, expansive, deep, warm, nurturing blackness. And it felt as if I was in a cocoon, like there was a cocoon around my body and I was floating and I was aware that there were others that were also in cocoons that were floating in this vast blackness and that I was able to kind of perceive in that knowing from some kind of peripheral sense experience. And there was peace. There was no worry. There was no anxiety. There was no fear. There was no anything that we associate with density. It was simply being. And out of that beingness, a question or what we would label as a question, like a thought form emerged of where was this place? Was there more? And instantaneously, as soon as that form kind of emerged, I was in another place entirely. And again, I don't know whether I traveled there or whether it emerged. I wasn't alone. There was this effulgence of this presence. And I don't have a label of whether it was a guide or an angel or whatever the presence was there for me to answer any questions I had and to guide me in understanding. There was some sort of understanding that this presence that was other than my own, yet that I was directly connected into, was there for my benefit and support with total unconditionality and understanding. And it was as if in this place, it's as if you put your head to someone, your forehead to someone else's forehead, and in an instant you could know and understand with every sense of knowing, senses we don't even have words for in our human reality, everything about that other person, everything that they had gone through, everything that they were navigating or that they had had to navigate in their life. And in that instant, I understood and was able to see and receive information about everything going on in my life at the time and the depth of understanding and of receiving that knowledge and that wisdom and the nature of being in a human body and having human experiences, I'm still unpacking, you know, it's been six and a half years and I'm still integrating all of that. And at some point, there was a sense of urgency that arose to get back. And I remember assuring my own self the part of me that was merged in with this presence as one started to kind of unmerge. It was like the only way I can describe it is, again, if you touch foreheads and you become 
merged as one and then you pull away and you're separate, that part of me assured that higher self in me, that higher I am presence is what I call it, what I call this presence, that, that I am presence that was merged in with this effulgent presence and being of light that was separate from me, there was a reassuring of my higher self and of that being that I would remember all that was imparted, all of the information that was imparted, all of the understandings that was imparted to me, all of the guidance that was imparted to me upon my return. And slowly I started to come back. There was a sense of coming down and I remember being kind of part in my body and part way out of my body and there was a density like a genie being squeezed into a bottle and there was I could start to hear and I heard this yelping sound and this screaming from the physical form and I realized at some point oh that's me I didn't feel anything yet I heard it from outside of myself and as I came deeper and deeper into this embodiment there was this weighted dense feeling and the next thing that I remember I remember being in and out when I was out of my body and in my body and as I was being loaded onto the ambulance I could see myself being loaded I wasn't completely in I could see it from outside of myself yet I was mostly in myself if that makes any sense and I remember hearing the sirens and very calmly again oh those sirens are for me and I was in and out and there was someone at my head there were several people in the ambulance and there was someone pressing on my head and talking the whole time yet I was still this kind of there was this interplay between the density weightedness and the and the lingering kind of being out and when I more realized and came was in full consciousness I was being taken into the trauma unit they took me to a different hospital that had a level one trauma unit and there was mass and organized chaos it was like organized chaos going on around me in the emergency room. And what I understood, there was three things that I understood loudly and clearly that was imparted. The first thing was before I came back into my body, I heard loud and clear from this presence other than my own that was merged into that I am presence, that that essence that divine part of me that divinity that we all have that home that remembering i heard it's time to live big like when you go back it's time to live big that was the first thing i heard and when i came back i heard this and i was still very much connected upon my return and upon kind of coming back into a body that was i had to le learn to walk and talk with a traumatic brain injury and like I said lots of fractures and internal organ damage and I heard all is truly well and the experience the third thing is the experience and the understanding that we are so much bigger than our bodies so what happened is when I was out and then I came back I learned so much the depth of layers of compassion and forgiveness and the all is well and the pillars of the all is well as was shared with me are compassion, our love, acceptance, love, forgiveness, gratitude, there are more and I understood boundaries in a different way and being a spiritual being having a spiritual experience and being a human being having a human experience and so much of the time as we walk through life and honor that everyone has that divine spark in them every single person is born from that and with that and whether people choose to access that or are guided to access that or not it's still within all of us 
And what I understood about forgiveness and compassion when I came back and what I was shown when I was outside and this review of all that had been going on in my life at the time and what I was returning to, yet with this broad perspective and this expansive understanding is that you can acknowledge and honor the essence of who someone truly is and pay attention to who they're being and have boundaries where boundaries are necessary, that boundaries don't make one less spiritual. And that was always my, not fear, but that was always my concern in seeing and acknowledging and living, you know, that place of namaste. Yet as humans, we can do that. And to our own, you know, body trauma triggering expense sometimes. So both, so being in the both end, and there was a lot shown to me about vibration and frequency and different states of feeling states and the seeds of the law of attraction. Because in this expansive place where there's no ego and there's no resistance, it's as soon as you think something, as soon as this energy builds where there's a question or a wondering or a curiosity it's immediately met and that purity of that place was extremely profound and really what the experience did is i had been on a spiritual path throughout my life for the past many past many years and have studied with revered spiritual wisdom teachers and have lived in ashrams and and have have had varied experiences and there was, a, there was a depth of knowing and solidification of the knowing in every cell and particle of my body and energy field that this is truly who we are and we all have access to this information and we can all experience it, expansive states of consciousness and the remembering of that place where all is truly well without having a near-death experience and without having to get hit by a truck in order to wake us up to listen to that inner guidance. Because I wasn't listening to the inner guidance and it took getting hit by a truck for me to pay attention in a new way. And, you know, I could see how I co how I co-created that. And I think that's also something, not in a shaming way, for us to say, well, how am I accountable for this, right? Like, how am I responsible for my partner having an affair? It's, it's not a shaming thing of, wow, it's my fault. It's looking at, oh, huh, I wasn't honoring myself and listening to my intuition and listening to the signs because there are things that we know that we know that we know that we pretend not to know. And it's leaning into the place where we know is that place of awakening and of cultivating a connection with our divinity and with the essence of who we truly are. And one more thing is after the experience and of late, the connection and the guidance has been to share that there truly is nothing to fear. There truly is nothing to fear. We just, we leave our breathing forms and our eternal part of us gets to go on. There's also, there's an acceptance. We are our worst critics and there's no judgment on the other side. There's not this being on a cloud in a throne that's gonna judge. It's a very loving and nourishing and nurturing and comforting and supportive place on the other side. And we all have our guides and angels and teachers who are there for us on to experience why we're here and to tune into that and also when we transition thank you